Welcome to the chill zone and today we're going to be talking about getting your nodes up and running on the XDAI or at least reading jobs from the XDAI chain. There's a couple of things that you're going to have to go through. Of course, I'm going to assume I'm going to also assume that you know a couple of things and have done a couple of things as this is just a matter of upgrading your node. So, of course, you should already have a node set up in some way, shape or form. You should understand what your management management wallet is. You should understand what your operational wallet is and so on and so forth. If you do not know any of these things, hold on for the origin trail course. You will get more insight in setting your nodes up. Today is mainly for those who already have origin trails, no origin trail node running, and they just want to get over to the XDI chain as well and start getting some jobs over there. So without further ado, let's dive into the requirements and a couple of things that you're going to need. Before we dive into anything at all, the first thing I want you to do is open up a text document and get this on your screen. This, this is absolutely vital. Okay. So after this is opened up, you're going to go to the origin trail website. We're going to head over to technology and we're going to head over to run a node. And we're going to get the instructions here for running an origin trail node, um, directly from the origin trail website. Of course, we're going to hit mainnet. And the first thing I want you to do, ignore all of this. First of all, copy this right here and then paste it into that text file. Now we are going to be working from this text file as we move on through the installation process. So be sure you save this and keep this secure. Do not save this text file on your computer or, or in any unsafe um, medium of storage. This is very important and vital information you always want to keep secure. So I'm just going to use this diagram here as a quick example of what we're trying to achieve. Today we're going to be moving from Ethereum and we're going to be connecting our origin trail nodes to be able to read information or read data or accept and bid for jobs on the XDAI chain. So to do that, of course, XDAI has its own form of gas. You know how Ethereum uses gas? Well, XDAI uses DAI as its gas and it's almost, well, it's damn near feeless. So that's why we're, we're migrating or at least integrating, not migrating, that's very wrong. That's a very wrong description of what's happening. We're actually expanding the ecosystem by um, integrating XDAI as one, just one, just one of the chains of the multiple many chains we will be having. So in order to do that, you're going to have to do one, two things. You're going to have to get XDAI. Now, if you're in the Ethereum ecosystem, this is known as DAI. So if you have DAI in your wallet, you can easily swap that over into XDAI. Now, if you're in the Ethereum system, you have track or the trace token. Now, when you swap that over to the XDAI chain, it becomes extract. There are two bridges to get this done. And as you can see this here, right here, die dash bridge. This is the bridge to swap, um, your X, your die into X die. And the Omni bridge is used to swap the Ethereum, Ethereum ERC 20 tokens. So as you can see, my wallet is connected. It is as easy as connecting your wallet. You're going to go to the token that you're trying to send over for us. That's track. Of course, this wallet is empty, so you're not going to have anything in there, but we're going to go here. We're going to select track and then you're going to, this is two transactions. The first transaction is for you to authorize that token on your wallet. And then the second transaction will be to transfer. So once you've completed the authorization process, you can go ahead and start transferring, um, track from, um, track to extract. Now, as you can see here, it says that you do need at least 3000 track to create your XDAI identity. And you do need um, some form of die or X die on the um, X die chain as gas. You know, the same way you're going to need Ethereum um, to use gas as gas on the um, Ethereum blockchain. This is my origin trail operational wallet test operational wallet. This wallet will never be used. There will never ever be funds in here. So this is an example wallet that I've set up to, of course, explain this easily for you guys. We're going to need a couple of things 
from this wallet just to start it off immediately. So let's begin the process of setting up your origin trail nodes. So the first thing we're going to do is copy the public address for your operational wallet on the node you're trying to transfer over to the um, XDAI chain. And we're going to open this very same document. And as you can see here, it says to copy the node wallet. So we're going to paste that right there because that's the operational wallet. And we're going to paste the public address for the operational wallet right here on your node wallet again. So we've completed that step. Now we're going to take the private key. We're going to get the private key for our operational wallet. And as you can see, here's the private key. We're going to copy that private key and then we're going to go right back over to our documentation. We're going to paste that right here. You says it says paste the X die wallet private key. Now you may see me copy and pasting the Ethereum private key and the Ethereum public key into here. And there's a reason for that. The wallet addresses are the exact same as X dies is a layer two for Ethereum. So the addresses are the same. So you can feel safe. It's very safe. It's okay to go ahead and copy your addresses right over. Now there's something to explain here. As you can see, this is the addition of the XDAI chain right here. It says the blockchain is XDAI and these, this is the Ethereum blockchain. So what this means is in your node configuration files, your node is reading from XDAI and your node is reading from Ethereum. And as we expand this multi-chain um, ecosystem, these, these, uh, these blockchains become nothing more than objects in the grand scheme of things. They're just something you just plug and play. Of course, you need the amount of track and whatever gas fees for these chains to get your identities, but it's very plug and play. So now that we've got our private keys for both the public and the, um, we've got the uh, public address and the private key for the operational wallet. What we're going to do now is copy the public address from the, your management wallet. Again, you don't need a private key, just the public address. So as you can see here, I've set up a little test management wallet that I'm going to copy right now. And we're going to paste that right over here. Uh, voila, boom, just like that. And right here as well. So this is going for both. Ethereum and XDAI. All right, so we've got our management wallet information in there just right. We've got the private keys. So pretty much we are all set as it looks to, as it relates to getting our wallets connected. Of course, there is still more to do here, so hold on. So if you have the previous, con if you have the configurations from your previous node, let's go ahead and close this off here right now and get this portion of it completely set up. So you should, the, the remote whitelist should be the same as you've seen before. You're not whitelisting anything. You should know how you're going to set your node up. And of course, your IP address, the host name should be the IP address of your particular node. You just copy that and paste it right in there. Now, this is very important. So the initial deposit amount tells your node, this is how much node, this is how much track I want to be used um, for jobs. And of course, the 3000 track is mandatory to be used for the creation of your identities. So go ahead and fill this information out. It says here, this is the ratio. This massive number equals one track. So of course, if I wanted 10, I'd have to add a zero, so on and so forth. Do whatever suits your needs. Now we're going to move on to the final piece of this setup. If you already have your origin trail node running, you already have an Infura um, RPC URL. Thus, you're going to, of course, copy that and paste that right here. And I'm pleased to say your configuration file is set up. Now, of course, there are additional parameters that you node runners put out there. As you can see on the community created um, OTNode.com, there's additional parameters that you may be interested in. So if you're interested in that setup, please keep in mind that this is community created. Milan is a reputable source um, of information in the origin tree community and is widely respected. I myself do use that website for setups. So do with that information what you will, but it is, he is a great help to the community. 
So now that you've got your configuration file set up completely, you're going to save that, tuck it away in your back pocket somewhere. Just minimize that and we're going to continue on getting your nodes updated to the V5 version. So let's begin. So, so to do that, we're going to head over to the official origin trail documentation. And of course, we're going to head over to the uh, V5 instructions on how to set your node up. There were a little bit of, um, because the documentation was released prior to the setup, they did give a little bit of warnings, but these are no longer applicable to, to anyone. Your nodes are ready to get running. So let's start with the immediate commands to see if your node has the appropriate uh, settings. So we're just gonna copy this command here. It's very easy and we're gonna fill in because the Docker, if your node is set up the standard way, as in you just um, followed the default installation instructions, you didn't use any custom pathing, you didn't use any custom naming for your Docker containers, you should be just fine going in here and just typing OT node. All right, that should be the standard name for your origin trail nodes. And let's see what version this node this node is on. So as you can see, this version is 4.1.17. We're gonna get to version five as that is the multi-chain update. So we're gonna continue. Of course, back up your nodes. Me, I have a service that backs up my nodes, so I'm not really worried about this. Back up your nodes always, please. Now, after you've completed the backup, we're just gonna go ahead and run these command right here. Now this command basically downloads a script. It downloads the migration script that will allow your nodes to transfer to the V5 um, update. So this command here initializes the script. So let's do LS. This is a list. So as you can see, after we've ran that command, we've downloaded the script. We can see that yes, the migrate, v, uh, the migrate script is now there. So now we're going to apply this command and watch what's going to happen. This is going to turn green, okay? And we're going to do LS again just to see. So as you can see, the migrate um, script is activated. It is now set to be ran as an executable. So we're going to run it. Now, there are a couple of things. If you did indeed use custom pathing, if you did indeed use custom naming, you're going to have to type all of this, copy this one here, right? And then you're going to fill in right here, the custom path, and you're going to fill in right here, the custom um, con container name that you set up. Of course, because we're not doing that, we didn't do that, we did everything standard. All we're going to do is simply just copy this portion right here and we're going to activate and run our script like so. And we're about to hit enter, boom. So, as you can see, it's not running and some of you guys will run into this issue as you already have. And all you have to do is get your node up and running. So Docker, <laughs> start, OT, node. I laughed because I actually have a song called Docker start OT node, funny. Anyway, um, yeah, Docker start OT node. As you can see, OT node. And now we're gonna try to run that migration script again and voila, it is functioning. Now this process can take up to 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is just let it run. And um, when it's done, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. So as you can see, the update has completed successfully and to verify, well, of course we see update completed successfully, but you also wanna make sure that you can see uh, within your logs that you are on the V5 network. So you're, you're gonna type here, Docker, logs dash f ot node and boom we are scrolling through our logs of course i am going to blur this out due to you know the amount of sensitive information but what you should see at the end is the version check local version is officially it is 5.0 and there is no new versions congratulations you have officially updated your origin trail node so let's get back out of here uh we're gonna clear the screen and now we are going to get our origin trail node actually um reading from the origin trail from the different um blockchains now, of course, to do this, we're going to be 
putting in the exact same file that we already edited. So it's already set up. All you have to do now is copy and paste. So let's head, let's head to what you, where you need to actually copy and where you need to actually paste. Of course, I've gone ahead and set up a node that is ready for, for you to actually apply this. So we're going to uh, copy the next steps here, open our configuration file, and it is blank because I've already set this up. You should remember this exact same configuration file we've been playing with all along. You're going to take all of that. Remember, this should be edited with the correct amount, et cetera, et cetera, because it's going to pull from your, um, the wallet that you've set up. All these wallets that we've set up is going to pull the track and make sure that you have enough track for your Ethereum, uh, for your um, XDAI uh, identity, and you have enough um, XDAI for gas and fees and whatnot. So, of course, just Control C and well, copy that, and you're going to save and close out. And now, after you've closed that off, we simply have to restart your node. Of course, the act of restarting your nodes. Um, gets the node to submit the changes to the network. So, and of course the name of our container is OT node. And once you've run that command, you should see the, you should see prompts like your identity and whatnot. You're going to want to copy those stuff off and, you know, of course, uh, hold on to your identities. But, uh, once you've done that successfully, you've successfully set up your origin trail node and it is ready to start bidding for jobs on the XDAI chain. Now, I know that I hope you guys are really excited. I hope you guys enjoyed um, going through this breakthrough. Uh, if you have any issues, you may run into issues. That's no problem. Head into the Origin Trail community, or as it says here, head into the Origin Trail Discord um, channel to get support. The community is very helpful. I'm very helpful. Anyone, anywhere, really and truly will help you with your note if you bring up that you have an issue. Uh, we kind of like helping each other. So yeah, uh, feel free to go ahead and start diving on, diving in there and playing around. I, I, I think I've pretty much covered everything. In fact, before I close out, I do want to go over otnode.com. This is created by a community member called Milan. Um, this is the community created website that I was talking about. As you can see in his installation, he offers some additional parameters like the uh, holding time and the data file sizes that you want to hold on your origin trail node. Um, so there are additional parameters. As I have said before, uh, what we just set up was the vanilla. So if you want additional parameters, feel free to go around and discuss with folks and, um, you know, do what best suits your needs. Um, but just keep in mind that we are, these are, we are community members. So just keep in mind that we are community members. So don't hold us at gunpoint. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Get your nodes up and running. I'm really excited. It's gonna be great. Have a great one, guys. Hey.